you know something? The Aquarius, the famous Aquarius or infamous Aquarius just keep getting weirder. <laughs> more weird, more unusual, more freaky, more scandals. You guys have sent me some really good ones. So if you know any more famous or infamous Aquarius that got some real scandals I can sink my teeth into, please send them to me either by social media or from my or at my email. You guys know I'm a very laid back person. <laughs> I'm a homebody. I don't have any drama at all. So it's fun to dig up these scandals and look at other people's drama, you know? So today our infamous Aquarius is a real weirdo, okay? <laughs> I can't even like sugarcoat it no kind of way. This is a strange man. This is probably, I, I mean, Ross Putin was a strange Aquarius too, but this Aquarius, I think got Ross Putin beat actually. He's even stranger than him. So let's do the introduction and I'm going to tell you about the, the weird boy. <laughs> I'm Queen Alset Haru and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, pass it on to somebody else who might like it too, and um, leave us a positive comment in the comments section. And please stick around to the end of the video because at the end, I'm going to read out two of my favorite comments from previous videos, and one of them might be yours. If you would like to get a reading done, please email me and any of my other information, including my email, is underneath this video. So let's talk about the weird bull, okay? Um, his name is Carl Tanzler. Um, Carl went by a couple other names too, and one of the most popular ones was Count Carl Von Kassel. He was not a count. <laughs> he wasn't even the count on Sesame Street, okay? He just made that up. It was one of the many lies that he told. Carl told a lot of lies about himself. And I thought that was interesting because psychology teaches us that a person who tells a lot of lies about themselves is unhappy with who they really are. So deep down inside, Carl was just a very un unhappy individual. So let me tell you why uh, Carl became famous. Carl was born on February the 8th of 1877, definitely in Aquarius. He died in the cancer season on July 3rd of 1952. Carl was born and raised in Germany. Um, he spent the majority of his life in Germany and then later on immigrated to the United States. Carl was a radiology technologist at the Marine Hospital Service in Key West, Florida. Carl said that he used to be a count and gave a whole bunch of other fantastic stories about his life, but this is the part we know to be actually factually true. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Carl before I get into why he turned up as one of the creepiest, freaky <laughs> Aquarius that I think we ever had talked about so far. Number one, um, Carl did have a sister. So we're going to talk about his origins. Carl was born in Germany. He did have one sister. Carl was said to be very intelligent, which is another Aquarius trait. So he was another one of the smart, quirky, weird Aquariuses. Very common for Aquarius. Carl had a wife and two kids later on in life. We're going to meet up with them and see what happened with them. Uh, one of his children died and the wife and the other kid um, immigrated also to the United States after a while. Uh, Carl was said to be very opinionated. He was also said to be an egotistical loner. Don't that sound Aquarius opinionated, egotistical loner? Now, a lot of us don't, the ego part is iffy, but a lot of dark and gray Aquarius do have a big ego issue. So he was this egotistical loner who often lied about himself. Carl had, or he said that he had prophetic dreams, okay? He also claimed to be a medium. Now, 
this could be true because a lot of Aquarius, no matter how sane we are or not, no matter how unusual we are or not, a lot of us have the tendency to have prophetic dreams and some of us may have mediumship. Uh, some of us are empaths. So it's very common for an Aquarius to have spiritual abilities. So this could have very well been true or Carl could have made it up because as we see, Carl likes to make things up. But this one, I believe, because of the fact that he's an Aquarius. So it says that he immigrated to the United States in 1926. And um, let me see. Uh, he immigrated to the United States without his family. They came later. And when his family came, Carl left, <laughs> which I thought was like, wow. So it was obviously a problem in his relationship and they didn't really go into it. I'd have to, I guess I'd have to look a lot deeper. Somebody said that Carl actually wrote a, a, bi a autobiography. So maybe it might be in there, but basically he left, he left them. They were living in Florida and he left uh, the city they were in to go to Key West, Florida. And started to work at the hospital that I was telling you guys about. Now, this hospital was a hospital that uh, had a lot of tuberculosis patients. And during that time, if you got tuberculosis, it was pretty much a death sentence. Um, some people did live, but it was like towards the end. And it was very infrequent in the beginning that you would live. At 55 years old, he is still working at this hospital and he falls in love with 21 year old Elena. She is a patient who has tuberculosis. So Carl tried to cure her. He's a radiologist, but he claims that he has some kind of a secret recipe weapon that can cure tuberculosis. And of course he tries to use this remedy on her um, because he is, and, I, and they said he fell in love with her, but I think it was more of like an infatuation because remember when I told you guys, he said he had prophetic dreams. Carl claims that he dreamt of his true love and that it was Elena. He said he didn't know at the time who it was. He just dreamt of this beautiful dark haired young lady. And Elena was indeed that. So he, after meeting her at the hospital and getting to know her, decided that that was the woman he had that dream about like 40 years before. So I don't really think he fell in love. I think it was more of an infatuation, but the, um, the article said he fell in love with her. The reason why I don't think it's love is because she didn't love him. She didn't, according to the article, she was in the hospital dying. I mean, she, you know, you know, she just kind of like, you know, whoever was there was there, you know, and, um, it didn't sound like she returned his affection is my point because they talked about him giving her gifts and professing his love to her and she just didn't really give it back and she was a married woman so this could have been why um but her husband abandoned her at the hospital and maybe you know she just figured you know till death do us part you know or maybe she just didn't like Carl because Carl kind of creepy. <laughs> Whatever the case was, Carl had this infatuation going on and um, he was trying to cure her with his home remedies. And he wasn't supposed to be doing that because he was supposed to be doing his job at the hospital, not trying to cure patients, which was not in his job description. Well, needless to say, she died. His remedies did not work. The real cures that she was taking at the hospital did not work and the poor baby died. So when she died, Carl said to her family, because her family was not a rich family. Um, it, he said that she, in his opinion, he didn't think she was very you know, close to her family. Um, she was a Cuban American. So we don't really know. Interestingly enough, she was a Leo. An Aquarius infatuated with a Leo makes sense. <laughs> they make really good friends. But um, yeah, she was a young girl and she was not really interested and she passed away. So her family did not have a lot, according to uh, what the sources say. So Carl went to her family and he told them, he said, you know, look, I know you don't have a lot. 
um, I am willing to bury her. I'm going to build her a mausoleum uh, where you can come and pay her respects so that she can be put away properly, you know? And the family didn't think much of it. They just thought he was some guy who, you know, had a thing for her and, you know, he was going to pay for the burial, you know? Not too many people would refuse if you offered to, you know, pay for somebody's entire burial. And they probably didn't think much of it. He'll pay for it. He'll go about his business. But this is where he gets creepier. <laughs> this is where the infamous came to his Aquarius. Because after he did pay for everything, he got her a mausoleum, he had her entombed in the mausoleum. And then Carl started to go talk to her at the mausoleum pretty regularly. They said that he would be sleeping inside the mausoleum with her. He'd be in there talking to her, sleeping by her, reading to her, you know, um, all kind of stuff like that. And I was just like, wait, what? So not only did you, you know, um, he got her body and put her in this mausoleum. Now he's hanging out with her corpse, like chilling on a Saturday. And I'm just like, okay, Carl has really lost touch with reality. So for two years, he did this. He, you know, did this and he was coming there. He was trying to preserve her body with his own home remedies once again. So some kind of way he was, you know, trying to preserve her body so she would last as long as possible and he would go in there and spend time with her. I can only imagine what the smell must have been like. I'm just like, this guy is really obsessed. So he did this for two years. After two years, Carl said that um, Elena spoke to him from the grave. Here we go again with this uh, supposed mediumship. Um, she spoke to him from the grave and told him to take her home with him. Okay? So Carl steals her body. You heard me right. He stole her from the cemetery. Took her to his home to be his wife. Okay, so Carl has gone off the deep end now. So two years in, you know, he's still, you know, dealing, dealing with this unhealthy obsession. He takes her home. And according to what people say, because mind you, we get this information, you know, from Carl and we get it secondhand too from the cops that ended up seeing this when they came in. Apparently he was taking care of her. He was, you know, um, he was basically trying to preserve her. He was doing things with wax um, he was using all kinds of different methods. I'm not going to get into it because it's very gruesome, very gruesome. But if you want to know more, all you got to do is punch in his name and YouTube has a couple videos on him and he does have an autobiography if you want to know more beyond that. But basically he was doing things to preserve her body. And some people think that he was being, um, romantically intimate, if you get my drift, with her body so um he's preserving her body and he's reading to her he's doing everything that he can to you know some little boy said he saw um carl dancing with her body so carl was basically you know um living out a full imaginary life with this lifeless body and as she was decomposing, he was, you know, using wax and they said kind of like a paper mache, you know, um, he was basically doing what we would call crude embalming methods, you know, um, to keep her body fresh as long as possible and then covering up and, you know, uh, changing, you know, and using perfume, they said, to cover the smell and things along those lines. So bust this, y'all. He lived with this body. Now, she's been dead for two years. He's been at the cemetery for two years, for seven more years. Altogether, that's nine years. So for seven years, he had her in his home, in his bed, in his living room, you know, pretending like she was his wife. Okay? Um, she had some issues happen with her scalp. They said he made her a wig out of her own hair. You know, he was really on some creep stuff, you know, 
um, this reminds me of like that movie, you know, Silence of the Lambs, you know, that kind of a vibration. But he, according to, um, to according to the history books, he never killed anybody or did anything other psychotic, weird kind of thing than just this. This was the only one. And I'm like, this was more than enough. So um, he also had thought during this time about launching her body into space. He came up with this idea that if he launched her into space, the molecules from space would some kind of way bring her back to life. But he never actually did it. He did build a launch pad. And if you Google it, you will see pictures of the launch pad. So he did build this launch pad and this rocket ship thing that he was going to use to try to do this, but he ended up never doing it. So, um, Elena had family, remember? So her sister started to hear a buzz going around town that he wasn't going to the cemetery anymore. Weird. He was going, you know, every day, all day before. Now all of a sudden he's not going anymore. It's been seven years and he doesn't go check on her anymore. Um, somebody saw him dancing with what looked like a life-size doll, more suspicion. So as time progressed, people just got really suspicious about him. And the sister was like, I'm going over there. Like I would, if that was my sister, I would have did the same thing. And she went to Carl's house and she barged her way in, they said, and saw her sister's partial corpse at this point because remember he's replacing pieces as they you know aren't usable anymore um and she sees this partial doll like thing um of her sister in her sister's clothes because he was you know buying her clothes and he kept some of the clothes that she had you know and was dressing her basically so the sister called the police and had him arrested the cops came, um, they were, everybody was like repulsed by this whole thing because not only did they figure out that that's who this person was, but they figured, you know, he's doing God knows what, what with her. Um, and the whole thing was just too weird, you know? And so what they decided to do was there was a lot of buzz about this in the community. So they decided to put her body on display. They took her to a funeral home and put what was left of her remains on display. At this point, I feel awful for this poor girl because she wasn't interested in him. She wanted no parts of this. And now she can't, her body can't even rest in peace. Now she's with him for nine years and then being paraded, you know, at a funeral parlor for the city. Cause everybody was like, oh my God, at this story. And they wanted to see what she looks like now. And they put her body on display and let people take a look and take pictures. And that's how I got the picture for this thumbnail. That picture on the thumbnail is the real Carl. And that's the real body as it was found. Anyway, so um, the body was put on display and then they reburied her in an unmarked grave because Carl asked for her body back. They tried him. Uh, the statute of limitations had already passed, so he just got basically a slap on the wrist. And people in Key West were very, um, they said they were sympathetic of him. They felt sorry for him. And I kind of do, but I kind of don't. But the people did feel sorry for him. Some people thought it was kind of romantic. I don't think kidnapping somebody's corpse is romantic, but okay. And, um, you know, um, they had to rebury him rebury her in an unmarked grave so her family and people like that they might have known where she was at but i'm sure that's been lost to history since then just because he was so infatuated with her they couldn't just put her someplace where he would find her so statute of limitations is over they slapped him on the wrist let him out of jail he wants the body back they tell him no and um he decides to go back to his wife remember the wife he left when he first came to florida uh, yeah, he went back to his wife. Now, I don't know if he was living with her, but they said his wife supported him. So she might've did it from a different household or he might've moved back in with her. I'm not sure, but she did support him after this happened. 
I thought that was really strange because I was like, he left you, ditched you and your child, and went off and did this. And it's all in the news, so you know she knew about it. And then you let him come back? I, I, mm -mm. I wouldn't have had nothing else to do with him. I guess she felt compassion, or maybe she was still in love with him, or... Or maybe she was just as quirky as him, you know. But whatever the case is, uh, in 19, um, after this happened, he went back to her and then he died in 1952. Now, here's the really creepy part. When they found him dead, there was another life-size doll, a replica of Elena. Elena, you will hear, sometimes they call her Helen. But same person, um, they found a replica, a life-size doll. So it wasn't her remains. Luckily, it doesn't seem like he found them again. But he did uh, manage to make a replica of her. And he was found with this replica. So Carl never really got over his obsession with this beautiful, and she was beautiful, beautiful young Cuban girl. Um, her full name is Elena Helen Milagro de Hoyos. And um, apparently, you know, she was a very beautiful young woman from what they said. And I could see why, he, I saw the pictures from her from, you know, before she passed away. So I could see why he would be attracted to her. But what he did was just creepy. That, yo, yo Aquarius, that was creepy. <laughs> so Carl gets creepy Aquarius. <laughs> Don't be like Carl, okay? All right, let's take a look at our positive comments. Positive comment one is from Darrell Bivens. What's up? Michael Bivens here. Are you related to Mr. Bivens? Uh, Darrell said, thank you so much. I'm going through this right now. Releasing the emotions does not come easy for me, but you dropped a few golden nuggets that were timely. Much love. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Bivens. You know, you running the show, Belle Biv DeVoe. <laughs> you might not even know what I'm talking about, but there used to be an old group um, called Belle Biv DeVoe, and Biv was Michael Bivens. So if you, know, if you know, you know. If you don't know, you might want to look that up. But thank you so much. I'm really glad that I was able to help. Um, you know, emotions are not easy, but it's very worth it to work through them. Thank you so much. Aqua Leo Flowers has another comment for us. She said, talk about being in instant tears. Oh, this was genuinely very good. And to start, I forgive myself for the years, decades of low to no self-worth. Healing is worth it. She's talking about the situation with Will Smith and Janet Hubert. So if you're interested to see more about that, um, I did a video. It's either already out or it's going to come out after this video, depending on how I line them up. And you'll be able to check that out. So um, it's about Will. It's a picture of Will in the thumbnail. Will Smith and Janet um, Hubert. And basically, to make a long story short, they had a long 30-year beef. And they were able to reconcile it. So I talked a lot about it because I thought it was beautiful. All right, Aqua Leo Flowers, forgiving yourself. That's the first person you should forgive. In all situations, forgive yourself first. All right, guys, come back soon because I got a lot more to say. See you later.